You guys are still in the Fest of Goblin. Only a few moments have passed since the fight resolved. Um, the uh, the people of the inn all recover, but they, many of them, the ones who are displaced by the fight, uh, are just kind of like standing against the wall and they're just watching, uh, somewhat alarmed. Uh, a couple of them are are. I would go so far as to say horrified at what they just saw. And the innkeep walks up and surveys the dead bodies. Oh, that's right. Oren is still passed out. Surveys the dead bodies, including including the fact that there's a fucking apparently, apparently dead high elf on the ground and says, uh, a lot of folks would like to do what you've done. Never thought I'd see it happen in my place. So the barkeep, the barkeep is like, uh, He's, there's a, a play of emotions over his face. He is simultaneously kind of alarmed. There's adrenaline running, but he's also like super impressed. Uh, we, me and Schmuck are still basically sat opposite uh, Why, uh, Elwin, right? Zoga strolls over to the unconscious form of Orin and says, Hey, Elf! I'm going to narrate what you do, Tom, if you don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and resuscitate Orin. March is the young boy. Uh, who was serving you and he uh, puts uh, when he when when March comes out with this giant carafe of milk much larger than any other drinking thing here in this inn right now and puts it on your table some people in the inn go back and sit down at their tables thank you boy unpasteurized I'd hope he says I, I, I don't know your honor you don't yeah, yeah, I, I, me, your honor oh uh, uh, yes my lord the cows I'm, were I'm raised augmented either. augmented force says the cows were raised in pastures if that's what you're asking <laughs> uh, good enough and i will uh, down the whole thing and look over my shoulder and see how the healing is going uh, uh, it yeah. seems to be a whole thing happening do, do i just roll my my healing skill yeah. is it just as simple as that I all think right so. great yeah. that is like that stabilizing it says and i think it also says the healing skill is healing but it doesn't really explain Explain. All right. Unconsciousness ends when the character regains hit points. Uh, so the heal check, I believe, which... Uh, that was a seven. Um, <laughs> plus five. Plus Whoa. five. We go. Got plus what you, five. What you guys need to do is you need to go recruit a bunch more players because if you can't roll above a seven or an eight, <laughs> gonna you're going to need more yeah. PCs. It's because we can't banish cursed dice. <laughs> We're stuck with that's them. true. That's true. That's true. You can't. The, color, though, right? the only floor of the digital tabletop. Um, I'm surprised that Fancy Grounds doesn't sell like custom dice. Whoa! There we go. I don't oh think you can just God. keep. I don't think you can just keep trying that until you win. A mug but that's of okay. beer from the table. Yes, just splash it into Oren's face to try and get Jesus. it to wake up. Who's this guy at the bar, man? What was his name again? El Elwin. Elwin. Right? Elwin Code. He he and his wife he's, own this place. He said, so I think I'm sat opposite him, right, uh, in the bar at the moment. So, uh, and he said, he said he, he, he's this front. guy here. Uh, where? Oh, no, he's this guy here. Yeah, well, I'm near him. Yeah, and actually, he's uh, going to be over here right now because he's looking, he's looking at the dead, he's looking at all the dead bodies. Uh, and he said this. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask him about. He said, uh, there was a lot of folks would like to have done what you've done. Never thought I'd see it happen in his play. Like, what's happened here before? Well, nothing like this, Your Honor. You've had some trouble. Oh no, not usually. Uh, usually, it's a, it's a, it's it's where it's a peaceful inn. Uh, people come here to relax, but when the slavers come, well, that changes everything. And they were the slavers. Well, Od, your character would know that those dwarves, those dwarves in that orc were slavers. Yeah. Okay. The the, gotcha. the dwarves it probably. It, this is a this is a well known fact. Like every government in this area had to do something in order to, to, they had to make some bargain with the overlord, with Ajax the Invincible, in order to continue to govern themselves and not be completely obliterated. And the dwarves promised the overlord uh, slaves. Gotcha. So uh, what, the, the, what they do is they, they patrol the roads and they'll basically just fucking kidnap people and, oh. uh, and sell them to, into forced labor camps for the overlord. Okay. And uh, I would say that depending on the character you are and where in the world you travel, um, you might only ever encounter dwarves who are slavers. But you might only you might encounter a lot of dwarves who fucking hate that their that their thane made that deal. Uh, two guards walk in. Two two members of the city watch walk in. That seems like it's gonna go badly. 
Oh, did we clean up the body before they came in? No, there was four dead. Uh, no, there's so many dead people. Yeah, there's and there's a <laughs> yeah. lot of blood. You guys are covered in blood. Um, there's blood it's all like over the Dragon floor. Dragon Age Origins in here. And there's a ton of um, there's a ton of terrified <laughs> terrified people. Uh, I and mean, that's not our job. To clean just up. Saying. So yeah, uh, these two these two uh, guards and they just look like normal city watchmen walk in. And one of them says, what in the seven hells? And uh, can I assume that since you guys were asking about it, that you guys still have your, um, you guys, are, are your characters where, in the, on the map, are you guys, are your characters where you think they are? Yes. Uh, yeah, I am, yes. I stayed at the bar. My characters, yeah. uh, Oren's also going to walk up to the, like Oren wakes up covered in beer, is, entirely disgusted so um she's gonna walk up to the bar welcome and ask for it <laughs> I, was, I, was en- I was enjoying i was enjoying a drink or two with kyle at the bar. Um, yeah but Warren's gonna walk up to the bar and ask for like a we're not gonna sit with us yeah i was about to say all the way down there how rude i don't know what well, just happened this young man we did walk uh, away when Warren was bleeding out march uh-huh. we'll get you what you want uh the guards uh because because the owner of the inn is standing actually where's the entrance uh, the entrance is over here um, they look at Zoga and Lavellus and they put their hands on their short swords which by the way a short sword is not an enormously threatening weapon uh, but their short swords are in their sheaths they just put their hands on the pommels and they look at Zoga and they say are you responsible for this uh, yes of course <laughs> Why? What do you do when when you're attacked by a, a gaggle of angry drunken dwarves? Well, we'll see who did the attacking and who did the defending. You're under arrest. And at this point, some of the townspeople speak up, and there's a there's a general rabble of of how. Th- we have a dragon man. This is well, the dragon man's way the fuck over there, and he's not near the. Yeah, entrance. but I just feel like the the townspeople would not be talking on behalf of us. If we weren't with a dragon, that is, you know, uh, what's going on here? Oh, uh, 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 your honor, uh, are 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 these are these are these people with you? They are, yes. Well, I beg in your pardon, my lord, but I, I'm afraid you lot will have to come with us until we sort out until we sort out what happened here. They're, everything is sorted out. We were keeping the peace here. They look at each other like somewhat skeptically, like this is a little bit above our pay grade. And they're like, well, uh, sir, I'm afraid, I'm afraid until we talk to everybody here, you won't be allowed to leave. I kind of smell my teeth a little bit. Oh, shit. There's a... Don't worry. I'm sure that everyone here will agree that the dwarf viciously attacked Orin. <laughs> so these guys are starting to feel a little bit outnumbered because they're surrounded by... And this um, young lady over here is also kind of like get their attention and say, no, you don't understand. Uh, you know, they, they, they helped us. They defended us. And these guys are not, these guys are not the smartest, most um, well-trained watchmen you've ever seen. And the more people start yelling at them and the more people trying to start explaining all at the same time, the more confused they get. And they say, we think it'd be best for everybody here if the one, two, three, four, five of you came with us down to the watch house. I think it'd be easier if you wanted to question everybody in the end to figure out what happened if we just stay here. I'm sure most of my companions are more than happy to sit at the bar and wait for your verdict. Begging your pardon, your honor, this gentleman says to you, Sir Vanazor, uh, but we don't take advice from any filthy elves. Mm. This elf is my friend. Um, at this point, something else happens. The door opens, and these two people, these two, the two guards turn to see who it is. And this woman is standing there kind of waiting for them to move aside so that she can come in. Oh, hello. Lady Avalina. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Lady Avalina, there we go. Uh, is, is she in? They step aside. These gotcha. two guys, these two guys step aside to let Lady Avalina in. And they say, the regent. And she walks in. She doesn't say, she, these two, these two 
uh, gentlemen, the city guard, step aside. And they're obviously like a bit in awe. Kind of the way they were when they first saw Servanazor. But then their awe of Servanazor was tempered by these other freaks in the room. And that confused them. But Lady I Evelina does not seem to be in any way um, intimidated by this. And she wants, she is soundlessly going to walk over to where all the bodies are and look around. How would I react? Would I, like, would I be, do I, like, she's a lady, would I? That's her look of you around, a, I see. Knowledge, bow, Amazing. kind of thing. Yeah, That's because a good uh, question. Lady Evelina kind of like, like, you're, like you're, you're lady, kind of. <laughs> you're lady. Uh, what were you asking? What, what were you asking, Anna? I was wondering uh, if you could describe what she looks like. Like, which what's she wearing? And like, what I mean, kind she of... looks basically as you see in the picture. She's wearing full plate. She has um, a shield, uh, but the shield is across her back. It's she's got a uh, it's slung over her back. And as she walks past you, you see on her shield there is a crest that shows like a um, a brazier that has a uh, little. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Stylized pieces of art of steam coming off of it, and three black circles hovering in the steam. Do I recognize that? Do you recognize that? How much time have you spent in Dalrath? I'm going to guess you're kind of new here. Yeah, I'm a bit new. Then it, it's a it's a it's some kind of human human heraldry that you would have to live here for a while to know. Okay. Um. She looked like a badass. Is what I'm trying to. Oh yeah. I'm trying to gauge. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Looking at the four dead dwarves, and the dead, and she pokes with her boot, with her her gauntleted boot, her armored boot, the dead body of the war breed, and says, "Well, I can't say I'm sad to see these lot face down in their own blood." It's coming back. You are welcome. <laughs> well, as I was saying to your uh, colleagues here, we were just keeping the peace in this uh, fine inn. I kind of look over to the barman and kind of, you know, or the, the landlord, give him a little nod. Yes, it, what, he, what he says is true. Yes, uh, the, the dragon knight and his allies saved us. Is there anyone in this inn who's going to point out that everything was fine until the half-elf, I'm sorry, everything was fine until the high-elf tripped? No, they're not going to. Would they be even able to perce perceive that I tripped versus having my foot stepped on? And then I mean, there were a bunch of people at the table right next to us. Yeah, no, they even if there's anybody in here who actually knows the correct sequence of events, they're not going to, by no means, are they going to sell you out. They could certainly tell that that one dwarf was going to cause trouble anyway. Yeah. He was quite drunk. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. He also chopped the goblin in half. Or almost in half. Evidence. Of their brutal nature. We can show it to her. Lady Evelina says... Sir Vanazor, if I'm not much mistaken. I heard you were in the city. Oh, yeah. Yes, your lady. It's an uh, honor. Are these uh, are these people with you? My honor. My my honor as well. Yes. Yes, yes. These are these are these are all my friends. We we travel together. Do you now? She says. And she looks at the at the giant man, the goal, the the wood elf and the high elf. This is your uh, a band? Yeah, Are they like your this. squires? A band would be a fair way to describe them, your lady. What was that? What was that sound I heard? That was just that. Uh, that was just Savannah sort of just giving a little, just a slight, a slight. Anna, I wish I, I, I wish I had words to express how much I love what you just wrote. <laughs> Lady Avelina turns to the uh, the two watchmen who were super in over their head and says, You two! I know you, Craddock and Brit. You have the brief honor of serving a knight of the last true king. Show your appreciation and clean this mess up. And they are hugely relieved to have somebody telling them what to do unambiguously <laughs> that they know and know they, they have to they listen to. They got to clean up the dead bodies? Oh, that's cool. She's saying, yeah, the... the I think that's me, right? Serving a knight of the last true king. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How clean relieving. It. We got to clean. clean up the mess. Clean that mess up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, I, 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 it's too bad that I'm, yeah. 
It would have been, uh, yeah. I wish that had been your your character's reaction. Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Od's reaction that's was me. so adorable. Was so adorable. <laughs> she uh, pays uh, Edwin, the barkeep, and yeah, one of the, he and his wife own this place. And says for your troubles and to cover any unpaid bills your customers may have. She looks over at the she looks at you lot again and then turns back to the room. Um, and says, good folk, your meals are paid for by the Lord of Dalrath tonight. You would serve him well if you forgot meeting any dwarves or orcs tonight. And then she looks at the goal and the barrow man and says, or anyone else for that matter. And uh, at this point, you know, like the old man is like, the old man over here is like, oh, shit, awesome. And goes to like, hey, yeah, the food's free and starts eating again. His wife is like, what's wrong with you? Come on, let's get out of here. And the people are going to start like, uh, quietly, you know, discreetly trying to eat as much of their food as they can before it's uh, it's uh, it would be rude to stay any longer. So they're like, they're, they're like, it into they're, that they're, yeah, they're like, oh, 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 and then drinking, and then they're all gonna fuck off. Uh, while these two guards are getting on with like this guy, the older one tells the younger one to talk to the barkeep and get a bucket and a mop and clean up the blood. That's the shit job. And he's going to start dragging the dead bodies uh, out. And he asks the barkeep to send uh, a runner to get a cart, send a runner back to the back to the jailhouse and have them bring us a cart to haul these bodies off. <laughs> Imagine this room had many fewer people in it. Oh, Co <laughs> helps the watchman. Uh, Lady Avelina says, uh, your lordship, you don't have to bother with that. These people will do as I tell them. Mm. I helped make this mess. I should help clean it up. That's very fair of you. Very um, democratic, she says. We appreciate your discretion. Lady Avelina gives Oren a look. And it's difficult for you to kind of interpret. I'm a high elf. Um... And, so, and, and she, hang on a minute. Right. She walks up to Servanazor. Actually, she's, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. she's not on the grid. Dude. Dude, oh, there we go. Uh, God damn it. I wish this is. Uh, oh, I don't have enough. Um, I don't have enough area on my monitor to do everything I want to do. And she says to you, Servanazor, may I speak with you privately? But of course, my lady. Uh, she sort of, actually, o Od would probably know this. Like, um, she didn't call you, sir, for the same reason you shouldn't call her, my lady, because you guys are equals. I Ah, like okay. all these other people should be calling both of you sir or my lady but you okay. but you two as far as the as far as the uh, local rules of feudalism are concerned you two are equal so like everybody else in the inn would be like it's a point of pride right that their knight lady avelina gets to address you as an equal so yes she says can uh, zoga takes a seat and begins eating the leftovers of the plate in front of him curiously watching the interaction between the dragon man and lady knight cool um and he's got his, his his milk mustache. In fact, he had a milk mustache through that entire battle. That's not Zoga, that's Ko. That's Ko? Sorry. Yeah. Zoga and Ko's name, I get confused. I apologize. I'll get used to them. Zoga and Ko sounds like a great startup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spin off. <laughs> uh, the goal, goal names and uh, Barrow Man names are actually pretty similar in construction. So it's, it's my fault for not being more familiar with those two cultures. So Lady Evelina, if you are if you are assenting, she's gonna go back here. Hang on a minute, I can open the door. There we go. And she's gonna have a little conversation with you. The VIP section. Um, where, did, where is that at? Now you can't see. It's well, through this door, right isn't it? Corner. That's this open door. I uh, um. <laughs> Where are you? Closed. I just closed the door. Oh, that's cool. 
You draw. No. The, you draw the. You draw the <laughs> curtains. Yeah. Well, it's just curtains. There's just a rod closing off this corner of the, the north, the northeast corner of the room. And uh, <laughs> we're all just getting closer. There, yeah. Here, let's. I can close this now to give me a little bit more room. And she says to you, in Od, in very. She says the following to you in very broken, um, draconic. All right, keep your secrets. <laughs> what kind of stuff are you looking for, Lavellis? Anything, just any bits and bobs. You know, you sit down at a table at a restaurant, you put your stuff down. Um, Purse. <laughs> iPhone. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a good question. Oh, that's right. <laughs> People with pockets don't understand. <laughs> yeah, they'll never know. <laughs> you have to unload every time you sit down anywhere. And then when you get up again, you have to do the pat down to make sure that you picked it all back up again. Are we just hearing a lot of clicks and like zzz? <laughs> Um, no, uh, Draconic actually sounds like Latin. So it sounds like two people speaking Latin. I was about to say, I used to have a leopard gecko, and I know the sounds that the leopard gecko makes, so that'd be pretty horrifying. <laughs> really? What kind of sounds does a leopard gecko make? They hiss and they squeak, if I remember, oh, but only like, if like they're me. stressed. <laughs> yes, like you. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's that. As far as she's concerned, your word is good enough. She just wants you to understand that bit, Od. Okay, I have one last line. You can go play, by all means. I'd love to see it. Um, type faster, Od. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you guys all hear that, I assume. Yeah, you'd, you'd hear from behind the curtain. Whenever uh, I hear Servanna's roar, though, I'm going to walk over closer to the, the curtains over there just to uh, make sure things are okay. In case I hear any scuffling about. Oh, uh, late. she left. Sorry. So I'm going to oh. open the door. Well, I opened oh, it. You closed it. Uh, yeah. You I, can, I, you I can see how the light comes in when you open it. I realize what I just did. Uh, opening and closing the door on yourself? <laughs> oh, what? What has happened there? Like uh, Ryan Gosling. Is it Ryan Gosling? Which one's Ryan Gosling? Yeah, Ryan Gosling and the nice guys in the bathroom. Uh, I'd imagine we, we've both come out of the room and we're kind of, we look, what's the word? What has the description? We look friendly, like like buddies. Well, Lady Avelina doesn't ever look friendly to anybody. Uh, uh, but, um, well, I look, I look more pleased with myself. The way <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> Not... Uh, Oh, that came, out, that came out the wrong way. Not, not like that. For a dragon man, is it easy to tell the difference between them looking like happy or glad or relieved versus them just snarling? <laughs> tail wag? Oh my god. <laughs> His tail wags. Wag, 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 wag. You can't help it. You can't help it. Terrible uh, poker face. Lady Avelina. Oh, I've got two. <laughs> uh, Lady Avelina go approaches Orin. Is there is there like a, a like humans shake hands? Is there like a formal greeting among the elves? Anna. Um, up for the high elves, it would be just a touch to their forehead. I think with their middle fingers, middle finger on their right hand. No, on their left hand. Kind of just like that, and like maybe like a slight like head tilt forward, like very slight, like just their head. This uh, is world building live, folks. <laughs> yeah, she she greets you in um, uh, what appears to be, based on my limited understanding, a normal elven uh, greeting, and she asks, um, "Who do I have the honor of addressing?" Uh, my name is Oren. She bows and she says, I am called Avelina, Lady of Dalrath. 
It's my pleasure to meet you, Lady Evelina. You and your companions travel under the countenance of a knight of our dead king, and therefore you are welcome here in our lands. That is a relief to hear. Um, Not otherwise. And then she looks over at the... Uh, she's going to probably... Because it's she's going to walk over here and she addresses the um, the barrow man. And she says, it is usually an ill omen that brings the barrow man down from the hills. Hmm. Well, the time is yet to tell. Do you come seeking your word, barrow man? Mm -hmm. Do I come seeking my word? Yeah, that is a, a phrase that you would know what meant. Your yes, character yes. knows what that means. Justice might not. Um, yeah, yeah. Word, W-Y-R-D. Mm. <clears throat> correct, yeah. Yes. It's weird. It's 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 weird. weird. It's actually, it's like W and then U with a numlaut over it. So it's like weird. Mm. Yeah, I nod. And is your fate bound up with ours? She asks. Would appear so. We live in dour times, Lady Avelina says. Uh, these guys uh, are packing up the bodies and taking them out. She... It's not always like this out here. Because I'm thinking that maybe like the barrel men like talk about humans and that this occurrence might not seem that weird of what they've been told. These are... It, you have entered violent lands, Barrow Man, but here in the walls of the city, things are usually peaceful. But the peace is readily broken whenever, and she nods to the blood on the floor, she says, whenever uh, the slavers come into town. And then she looks at Sir Banazor and Orin and says, especially when those who serve justice are in the same building. Well, let's hope that the city returns to its calm. Alas, I fear it will be, uh, much blood will be spilt before that happens. Uh, barkeep, uh, yes, 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 milady. And uh, she says, um, these folk will be staying here tonight free of charge, I assume. And he's like, oh, uh, free of charge. Yeah, well, yes, of course, if uh, if the regent wishes, if these are the, if uh, yes, it is our, it's my pleasure to serve the Lord of Dalrath in, yes. Absolutely, yes. Uh, you, you all, and he addresses what's left of the room, which is you lot. R rooms are upstairs. Uh, you're free to uh, spend the night. Uh, there's a bath. I'll have my I'll have my son uh, provide the hot water. Much appreciated. We could use a good rest. Um, and Lady Evelina fucks off. Question. Oh. If, hmm? I know you said I wouldn't address her as like, uh, my lady or something no. like that. No, you would just call I literally Avelina. just call her Avelina. Okay, yes. yeah. Avi. <laughs> yes. All right, cool. Unless you folks want to do, um, you know, moving, so moving right along, uh, I am happy to f advance the plot until tomorrow. Yeah. I, I just want to know what Vanazor was talking about with <laughs> Lady Avelina. Agreed. Yeah. Now, I just want to, oh. for context, I want to remind everybody, this Gather is round. literally Gather the first round. time you folks have met. You all came to Dalrath uh, for different reasons. And Wait, now you said we're friends. <laughs> it was his words. He said we're friends. It's just that Vanessa's running around. Here. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. I love this. Yeah, I, I just assumed that he was that he was covering for us. Well, I didn't realize that this was our first time meeting. I thought like there was some back thing and it didn't really fucking matter. And we all were having to do something together and that was it. No, the, the, uh, limited, because obviously like, you know, I didn't, I, I envisioned this adventure as being mostly a way to show off uh, fourth edition. I just wrote some bullshit about this is, this is, this is the backstory. You are five heroes, all strangers in this land. You each arrived in the wall city surrounding Dalrath Castle for different reasons. None of you are much like the farmers and the millers that eat here. So when you walk into this inn from wherever you folks, wherever you each are from, you're all like, I don't belong here. 
right? But you also, when you saw the dwarves in the corner, you're like, well, I'm definitely not like them. But when you saw like the dragon man sitting in the corner, you're like, well, that guy seems like he's out of place here like I am. I'll go sit over there by him. A bit like a lizard. It's like the island of misfit toys. Uh, <laughs> so that, I mean, I'll kind of tell him, say, Look, you, you fought so bravely uh, we, alongside me uh, against the, the dwarf and, and the orc that I told Avelina that we travel together and that we are friends and you are under my what's the word I'm looking for uh protection there you go that's basically what I tell them tell the party does that mean that you're not responsible for us according to Avelina uh <laughs> let's not let's not let's not step out of line and risk our welcome in the city there are plenty of people that still do not like elves that's not that's not what she asked but okay so it seems like we're stuck together well it you all seem with me a woman walks in i mean it's now it's like phoenix it's not what is that what? It's Satin Phoenix. Oh, sure. Yeah, actually, uh, that's a pretty good. That's pretty good casting, I would say. Um, in <laughs> fact, this is what she looks like. That's funny because her name is Satati. When the door opens, the barkeep looks up um, and uh, and then sees who it is and just like nods at her. Is uh is the implication uh because the bar is like completely empty except for this person? Yeah. Is it supposed to be that it's like? we have it reserved now so additional people coming in is like a little bit odd yeah there's probably some um signage that uh in fact he'll you'll watch him do that when she walks in he's like oh shit that's right uh i should probably fucking put up the we're closed sign and so the barkeep is gonna walk over to the window um which i don't know where it is here it is All right. And he'll put up the sign or wherever it is. There's got to be some kind of like we're closed signage that he deploys. Yeah, and uh, and he does so. Uh, I would like to try and catch the barkeep's eye and kind of like nod towards this uh, newcomer and raise my eyebrows in such a way that's just like, do you she's know? Coming. She's coming. Oh, she's coming. Hello. She's still right next to us now. Ah. You look really uncomfortable. So fast. <laughs> Uh, so just okay. FYI, um, none of you are human. Uh, nope. Technically, I mean, Tom's character is human, but he's like of a, his culture is so different than the normal civilized human cultures that he is basically an alien here, just like you folks are. And um, Ko isn't sure whether to face the lady or the group. I just wanted to kind of get an idea, like if the bartender was oh. like, uh, no, he just ignores her. Okay. Uh, so there were people in this inn before it, before you folks cleared it out. There were folks in this inn who looked like this woman. They just weren't dressed like this woman. Right? She dressed nicely. I beg your pardon? And she's just like more fancy, I'm assuming. Well, she's, it, it, I mean, it, it would, yeah, I would say that she does look like she is more fancily dressed. I mean, it's obviously a very different style of dress than anyone in this inn wore. Like everybody in this inn was all dressed alike. And your assumption, if this is your first time in human lands is, this is what humans dress like. This humans dressed very differently. So there were people of all different like um, human shapes and sizes in the inn when you walked in, but none of them were dressed like this woman. She says, the sun shines on us all. I was trying to think of what the response is that, oh, God. It's I so good. It. Yeah, I'm but trying not time. to say something sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zoga. <laughs> um, I'll say, uh, as does the moon. Mm. Seems like a very high old thing to say. That That is a super interesting response. I think she's probably going to ignore Zoga. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Zoga. Um, no, maybe not. She would probably say something like, um, uh, though the light may be hidden, it is never extinguished. This woman appears to be in her early forties. 
She's dressed, as you see. Um, she looks around the inn and says, I've never had to do this before. I'm unsure of the formalities, but... And then she like kind of gives up and says the obvious thing. I am in need of heroes. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. I think you're being modest, lady, sir, elf. Well, if you'd like to speak to a hero, I think you're best talking to our friend here, Sir Vanazor. Your companions are modest, Sir Vanazor, she says, nodding to the dragon men. Not too close. Shall we all sit? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's sit. That's a good idea. Big fan of sitting. Um, Satati is going to make an insight check. And she rolled remarkably well. And she kind of takes a read of the five of you and asks, asks Sir Vanazor, um, how long have you been traveling together? We are recently acquainted uh, in this fine establishment. We had some trouble and these... Uh, fine warriors stood alongside me and helped defeat the wipe wipe out the trouble that we had in this inn and again i look over towards the barkeep and uh march is it and kind of give march is nod. the son um yeah give him a little nod uh yeah he 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 confirms whatever it was you just said satati she introduces herself she says um she uh, she would probably say i i am i am named satati i serve the boatman mm. And I come needing aid, the kind of aid that I, that none of the locals could help with. Um, have, it does the sun shine upon me? Are you looking for work? Describe this aid you so seek. A oh. young woman in my service, Demelza, an apprentice, an acolyte ventured into the Black Forest two weeks ago and has not returned. If she had died, I would know. She is diligent and faithful. Since she has not returned from her private quest, something is preventing her. Do I know what the Black Forest is? Is um, it a wood? Yeah, I was going to ask, is that, it's, it's not one of the woods, is it? It's just a forest? Yeah, correct. In fact, let me see if I can... Is it a cursed forest? Um, it's it's the human name for the forest directly south of Dalrath. Dalrath. So it's a hu It's it's a it's a not not elf forest. It's a from the human's point of view, it's a normal forest. From the elves' point of view, it would probably be like a dead forest. That's sad. So, by the way, the Black Forest is where Zoga's from. And now, for a walk in the Black Forest. There are oh. two, um... Yeah, you guys wouldn't, you guys wouldn't know this, but Zoga would. So, so, uh, Zoga. Yeah. How's it going, Tom? Uh, yeah. good. There used to be, um, two forests south of Dalrath. There was the Black Forest, where your tribe of Gol live. And there was the Galdor Forest, which is where the or uh, which is where the orcs lived. Mm -hmm. But in the past um, couple of years, those two forests have grown together, and they've and, and you don't know why. Oh, um, interesting. And as a result, the Gol and the orc, who used to be kind of like, they were a lot of respect between the two tribes because you both have the same attitude toward humans, which is or the civilized humans, which is that they cut down trees and make make roads, and that's fucked up. Um, now you guys are engaged in these kind of constant border disputes. Right. And the, uh, the fact that these two forests have grown together 
basically like it, it, it has shut off Dalrath and the towns of Wend and Chard and Melaine from the rest of the civilized human lands. It now takes a lot longer for Dalrath to get any kind of support from the rest of the, the other baronies to the south. Like there is no, there is no easy road from Dalrath into Bedegar now. You can't do it. You just got to go around this giant fuck off forest. Ah, uh, yeah, because I have to go around it. Yeah. This sounds a little familiar. Yep, yep. This is this is <laughs> OD and D version two. I <laughs> redesigned this adventure to make it more difficult for my players to thwart me. So uh, I think we should uh, just ignore this woman <laughs> and stay in the, <laughs> stay in the bar. <laughs> maybe have, maybe have a little round of, look around the town and. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even know if we should leave the inn. Right, let's just stay in this inn, yeah. And then surely all the content will just come to us. I can mean, become friends. Like, like, yeah. These, ba so, these bandits walk in and says, this inn belongs to us. And you guys are like, yep, sounds good to me. Yep, please. 100% cool. Oh, dear. She <laughs> says, I do not come empty handed. The temple can pay. I have some little knowledge of the new woad to the south. Do we? I it, do I recognize it as a woad? Uh, I mean, I don't even know if you've ever been there. You, uh, you, you know it exists. You know that there are. You know that there are forests in the human lands. Like once, you, like you're, you're both you and Lavellus, Even though you're from two different nations, or yeah, even though you're from two different nations, both you and Lavellus, you're from the Great Woad, which is this massive, fucking forest that dominates almost the entire world. Okay. Greatest I mean, forest in this or any age. Yeah, it's huge. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 the, the, the Great Woad is larger than any human region. Um, um, and, for some reason, I was thinking, like, as a high elf, like, yeah. you know, their whole deal with, like, wanting to just kind of know everything that other forests slash woes or something like that would be kind of, maybe not common knowledge, but at least... Well, it's up to you. It's your, this is your character. You're a guard. Or I don't know actually what your background is. I pitched you something, but there's a lot of different ways you could be a, a high elf, high elf fighter. I believe we both know what my background is and what my quest is. Unfortunately, there are there's no there are no there are no uh, there's not a hostess truck here. Um, <laughs> what was I before Anna distracted me with her ridiculous talking backstory? Forest, what were we <laughs> talking about? Woads and yeah. So knowledge. Anna, so bo both both <laughs> Orin and Lavellus, probably Lavellus knows more about this than anybody. But like, um, you know that there are forests out in the human lands. They're just not woads. They're they're. I don't know what your elf word for it would be, but it would probably be something like they are. They have been. They've been tamed. They've been tamed, but like tamed in the sense of like oh, gross, broken. They've uh. been broken. They're not alive anymore. But the actual, yeah. the Black Forest, you've, you, I mean, that's just, you know, it's just a name they give to some local forest. Who gives a shit? You're an elf. You know? Hmm. There are lots of, for, there are lots of little forests out there. But there are also little, uh, I don't know what, again, I don't know what term the elves would use for this. There's a, there are a lot of satellite woads. Like, just in the local area, there's the Elgin Woad and the Bale Woad. Mm -hmm. um, which are still, even though they're small, they're still, um what the humans call elf haunted. Okay. Places that kind of like spring That's up. That's sick. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah. Okay. She says, I've spoken with the woodsmen and carters who knew the territory before the forest come closed in. I might be able to help give you some direction, she says kind of desperately. They would join us in the forest. I'm sorry. What? Say that again. They would join us in the. No, forest? she's just saying like no. I, I I don't know this area that well, but I've spoken mm -hmm. to people who do, so I can kind of maybe tell you a little bit about where you need to go. But otherwise, I mean, who knows? Who knows what's going on in the Black Forest? All I know is that I lost somebody who's important to me, and I think she's still alive. And if so, I'd like to get her back. When did uh, you expect Melza to return? She Yeah, how long has she been gone? She's been gone for two weeks. And um she looks a little bit like embarrassed. Like she looks down at the table and she says, I uh, I do not know why she went into the wood or 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 the, the forest. 
But I do know she traveled every week to the town of Mullane, which is a local, a near, a one of the towns that this city protects, um, Matt says. That's not her. And then she admits that Demelza never told me anything. Never told me everything, rather. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, I don't know what her business was in Mullane. She, I assume that she was tending to the sick and the dying there. Actually, she wouldn't say the sick and the dying. She would say the newly born and the uh, soon to pass over. And then uh, the barkeep who's kind of, you know, overheard all this says this. What does that mean? That like they gave up going to Mullane? Like they left Mullane to go south? Um, is that what Orin asks? Orin doesn't care, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, you could decide. It's up to you. If you if you're curious, it's your character. You can just you could anyway. Oh no, that's that's a hundred percent in character for her not to care Fair about enough. human movements. I guess in general, especially farmers and the like that are commoners. Do we know what did she say? What god she worships? Like, is this this is? I'm guessing a she identified herself boatman. as a. She said, "I serve the boatman." Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I make a religion check to see if I know what the hell that references? Um, <laughs> but I had that. Normally, I would probably say no because you're an elf from the forest and you don't know a lot of human religions. But if you want to, go ahead. Sure. If it makes sense to you that your character might know, whoa, yeah, you absolutely know what whoa. it is. Whoa, <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Glad I got a twenty on that check. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what? What your background is? You obviously must know uh, and have dealt with some humans, or or you've been interested in their culture, because the boatman. Yeah, is, I mean, I've. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go on. The boatman oh, is a, an gonna... alien god to this place. <laughs> Right, it's not uh, the the boatman is not a god of Vasloria. The boatman is a Kehmite god of the infinite desert, and in fact, the boatman is a um, actually. Hang on a minute, Dale. <gasps> wait, if, is on, this gonna be? I don't know. Wait, we'll I see. feel like I'm already getting a reference. Hang on, hang on a minute. I'm very excited. Did that work? Mm-hmm. It did, yep. and okay, I'm cool. reading it very Good. slowly. I hate when a, one character knows something, and then I have to say it out loud to everybody. I much prefer when I can just tell that character, that player, and then it's up to that player to use that knowledge and convey it when they think it's appropriate and how they think it's appropriate, in character or out of character. Dang. <gasps> Interesting. Yep, 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 yep. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, all right. I'm with it. Okay, cool. Um, so she's just looking for somebody to go into the woad and find her missing acolyte. She says, "I was, I found myself incredibly lucky to have um, a local willing to devote herself to Sectare, and I would be loath to lose her, and I fear she is in danger." What? Uh, I understand your reluctance. Is it gold you seek? Is it, are you here for some reason? Perhaps I could help. What can you offer us? Gold isn't necessarily a requirement. There might be other things that are valuable. What is it you seek? She asks. What kind of temple is it that you, is it a temple or is it just individual worship? If you, depending on which gate you came through when you came here, you may have passed my temple. Uh, yeah, she's got, there's like three, if you look on the map of Dalrath, actually, which you have in your images folder. Yes. Right? Dalrath. You can Dalrath see, Keep. Yeah, yeah. if you look at Dalrath Keep, mm -hmm. you can, uh, you can see where, where the temple of the boatman is. The temple of Sekt right. Sektare, rather. Temple of Sectaris 12. Number 12. There it is. Oh, yeah. Straight north from where we are, right? And you guys are in the Fest of Goblin, which is five. Five, yeah. So actually, you might not have... It, it, the Fest of Goblin is on the lower... Um, actually, they have terms for this. Um, and I don't remember what they are. I think it's like upstairs. I think you guys are on what they call the floor. And they colloquially refer to the upper part of, of the city as upstairs. 
Um, so you guys may never have gone up to the upper half of Dalrath. But if you came in through the um, high gate, right? Or actually the elves probably came in through the bulwark. Because that's the, the, the very top. north. Yeah, north is to where the woad is. Um, but if you came right. in either there, then you would have been, then you may have seen, you certainly would have seen the Church of St. Tathan, which is like the largest stone building. Actually, where's, gotcha, gotcha, where's gotcha. my, where are my notes? Why don't I have notes here? That's weird. Anyway. Oh, because it's in another module. I apologize. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, she has a, she has a church, she has a temple. Um, it's not the biggest temple in this. There's only three real uh, religious buildings here. Hers is not the largest. Yeah, it looks like the Church of St. Nathan is the largest. Her, like, that one looks pretty big, though. Yeah, I mean, um, she was blessed by the Lord of Dalrath. I see. He gave her, he gave her, he gave her that, uh, he gave her an old, an old unused building. And she has repopulated it. Um, are there things that your temple? She says, "Yeah, I can give you knowledge." She says, "The she says, um, even the darkest shadow eventually is touched by the sun." Hmm. Are there seers in her temple? Like, would it be normal if I'm chasing my word? Yeah. Would it be normal for me to seek out like an oracle? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I want to do it. You, you, you have had a vision. You're here because you had a vision of your death. Have we talked about this, Justice? Yeah, I think we did very briefly. I've seen my own death, right? Yeah, yeah. You have, but the, the, the vision that you have seen is very cryptic, hmm. right? And it's not clear whether or not. Do you die heroically? Do you die in agony? Do you die, you know, what's... And so um, it's it's not unusual for one of the Barrow men to come out of the hills in order to fulfill their weird, right? Because if you don't, if you try to turn from the vision, bad shit happens to you. Yeah. Right? Like, well, then no matter how bad your fate might be, it's way, way worse. And by the way, this is not metaphorical. This is literally, this. this is how your people live. Um, and so probably the first thing you do is you're trying to find somebody to interpret your dream, your vision. It's not a dream. It's a vision. Yeah. I'd like that. Yeah. Then I, then I'm in for it. I mean, I, in big fish, he sees his, uh, destiny of his death and he's not scared of anything. And I feel like maybe co is the same way. He knows he's not dying right now. So why say no, let's help. Mm. In order for us to, assist does your temple have any um any ability to connect us with uh i mean it seems likely each human settlement appears to have some sort of wizard or shops with you seek a wizard something where we might be able to equip ourselves what? before adventuring outwards into the black forest she says i can I would be happy. I would be an honor for my temple to provide you with the minor magics that would help you in your quest. Potions, scrolls. Because my user just remembered that potions of healing are like really common in <laughs> in this game and that <laughs> and that's and my user tells me that I should definitely uh be handing out potions of healing. Uh -huh. Among other things, um, yeah, she'd be. She was. She would say, "If you if you require lore beyond my ken, I, mm -hmm. I might be able to put you in touch with Rosad." But she kind of shakes her head and says, "He comes and goes." Understandable. Well, I don't really have anything better to do, so I suppose we can go find. Your person. Is it, uh, she has, is she's she like, human? she's like, I beg your pardon. Is she a human? Yes. Uh, she is, she is, uh, yes, she is a human. Uh, she is a uh, local. She is, um, 
she is not from Dalrath. She's from the south, but she is a Vaslorian. Mm. Plus, it seems like we're not incredibly welcome in this town, and they have troubles of their own, so it might be nice to get out of the city for a little bit. She Staying here could be uncomfortable for us, yes. And I would be happy to help. I do not know what you've heard, but do not underestimate these people, she says. Um, I, it is in my heart that they are good, and that whatever their prejudices, if they know you and if you seek justice, then they will respect you. Well, let's do a good deed. Um, yeah, I, for one, feel more comfortable in a forest. So she's she's like, you? she 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 take she lets out a deep breath and she's like, I did not know how relieved I would be to hear you say yes. It surprises me. Thank you, thank you. I owe you much. Okay, well we haven't saved her yet. <laughs> yeah, we we don't roll above a five, so this might not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to come back in two weeks and we're missing now. Yeah, right. She's like, yeah. Else no, Lady her. Adelina, I need your help. Yeah. <laughs> you know those five idiots I set off in the forest. Uh, 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 there we go. Right. Sweet. Let's see. What else does she, what else might, what might she have? Um, we should have taken the money from the dwarf corpses. Is that is that how Lavellus thinks? That's cool. It definitely is. Like man, actually, now that I stop and think about it, man, there's a there's a bunch like of cash just walked out the door. Not doing it. Mm. Uh, Savannah would frown upon that a little. All that's gonna happen is it's gonna go to the government. Those cops probably took it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she'll do. She'll do this. If someone's gonna yeah. steal their money, it should be us. We did all the hard work. All right, so now we're going to see Satati takes off her um, blimey, takes off her necklace, puts it on oh, the table. Yeah. And uh, and so let's see if this works. Testing. Yep. Okay. What happens <laughs> if I do this? Did that work? Did what work? What, what, what do we expect I guess. I guess. I guess in the, uh, to a certain extent, no. Um, was all that a tangent from the drawing tool? Um, yes, yes yeah. it was. Yeah. So you guys need to, I, I recommend you all open the party sheet, which is the icon in the ultimate upper right of Fantasy Grounds. Mm -hmm. And then click on the mm -hmm. inventory tab. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, 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 we've got an amulet of protection oh, cool. and five yeah. potions of and healing. Five potions of healing. Yeah, the amulet of mm -hmm. protection she can give you right now, the potion she's going to have to go back to the temple. It's still early evening yet. The temple will be open till almost midnight. Yeah, and we will need to sleep at some point because some of us are wounded. <laughs> um, I feel good. Yeah, you guys are. Yeah. She, she definitely. Uh, she doesn't expect you to set out tonight. She she wouldn't even be surprised if you guys wanted to spend tomorrow like getting ready or whatever. But Matt assumes that you're going to head out tomorrow. So yeah, you guys are going to need to sleep. You guys are going to need to. Um, uh, oh, distribute your, your magic items. So, are we assuming that this is now breakfast? It's up to you guys. Do you, is there anything else you want to do tonight? Mm. Or if th through the rest of the evening, you have the inn to yourselves, basically. Well, in that case, we should probably celebrate our uh, heroic encounter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, drink, and drink and eat because uh, Elwyn is ha very happy to provide you folks it's with all uh, for free, if I remember yep, rightly. Yep, paid for, paid for by the Lord of Dalrath. Arch. Yeah, drink. they'll bring you. Yeah. There, the innkeep is very happy. I mean, he, 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 and his family feel blessed that Lady Avelina came in and was so gracious to them, um, and that there's a dragon man here who apparently likes his his inn. So he will put on he'll put on the best feast he can do at short notice. Perfect. I do want to ask um, Vanazor because I know he had a little chat with Lady Avelina. Um, there seemed to be a mixed reception to a high elf being in this inn, and after uh, 
Avelina came out, she seemed to be much more like warm to my presence um, compared to the guards who were very much just like, we don't talk to high elves kind of thing. And I wanted to see if he understood what what difference there was or if there was anything in particular said about like that. Um, or if I already just kind of know, because I know there was the whole thing where it's like, oh, hi, some high elves are, and high elf made like a deal with Ajax or something. Like how familiar am I with all that? Uh, that is not an OD question, I guess. Well, I mean, uh, dinosaur breed safe. I mean, it's I've I, I let I let Lady Avelina know that you you fought with us and that I I'm, I'm basically sticking up for you. That's what I did in there. Mm. Like I said, like you're you're under my you're with me. You're in my band. There's nothing there's nothing for you to worry about. I kind of trust me is what I said to her, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was she concerned about all members of the party? Uh, two of you, for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well said. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was the other? Uh, <laughs> uh, Lovellis. Just the other? What a surprise! <laughs> Yes. The mistake that you made, Oren, was trying to talk to humans. That just feels like talking to a wall. I definitely don't understand them. The, the cat rolls over and changes position and starts to warm the other side of her body. <laughs> did, did the cat move at all during nope. that entire... Nope. <laughs> that is a good nope. cat. Biscuit, Biscuit's seen it all. Biscuit don't care. Savannah, Savannah still rips her hunk of bread. And starts, starts eating. Oren sighs and kind of elbows Zoga and very reluctantly says thank you. And also very quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who are you saying thank you to? Zoga okay. for uh, earlier. <laughs> Uh, uh, don't mention it. You know, maybe seat. next time. Oh. Damn it, Matt. Oh, no, what did I say? Sorry. I, keep talking. Ignore me. What uh, uh, Zoga's just like, don't worry about it. Cracks a joke about, like, being on your ass for half the fight, but he sees the potential in you as a fighter. And it's generally super stoked to have something good to do. Hmm. Uh, Oren makes a bit of a... <laughs> I don't know how to describe the expression. Whenever Zoga says that he sees potential in like, her ability as a fighter, like she definitely makes this kind of like pursed sour face, but it is extremely subtle. <laughs> Thank, thank you for your confidence. <laughs> Elwyn, the, the, the owner of the bar, kind of a, as he's serving, uh, he notices the aroma of uh, wheat soda <laughs> coming off of Oren and uh, says, uh, Miss, if you'd like, there's a bath ready upstairs. M Mrs. Code can clean your clothes. Uh... That's okay. I'll take I'll take care of my own linens. Thank you. And actually, I've heard that uh, beer is supposed to be good for your hair. So, but I will take a bath. Thank you. Okay. He he scurries off. Uh. <clears throat> uh. <clears throat> Co. During combat, there was a moment where we were next to each other and then the next thing I knew I was stood on a table what <laughs> how do you know how that what what happened there Co? I need uh, to know it confuses Sir Vanasaur mm. well Sir Vanasaur it's a technique I learned when I was just a giant boy uh, it's called <laughs> the dragon's tail and it involves well not to be confusing I don't have a tail per se but uh 
I picked you up very quickly and uh, set you down very quickly. And then I just squeezed past you and um, then it was over. He has a dragon's tail. Yeah, like as you, when you say dragon's tail, my tail kind of flicks, like kind of almost like a nerves twitch. <laughs> and um, it's impressive, Co. It's something Savansor should learn. Mm. Perhaps one and day you can teach me. Yes, I would like to learn how to roar as you do. It is quite frightening. <laughs> uh, I, I lift my cup of mead or ale up and go to cheers with Co. Yeah, I toast. Uh, well, I think Orin is going to go ahead and retire to her bath. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, uh, I'd just like to very briefly point out that I do think that this is one of the key differences between a high elf and a wood elf right now, because I just feel like Lavellus has zero concern for being covered in blood. Like, that's part of the, the look. Of I forgot you guys someone who's come blood. out of combat. So for me, I'm like, this is this is it. This is part of the aesthetic. I apologize. So I, I overlooked have... the fact you guys are all covered in blood. <laughs> I just yeah, imagine sure. what's um. I just imagine that you guys are like, you know, it's like um, at the end of Ghostbusters when Bill Murray is the only one somehow not covered in, uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow. <laughs> uh, anyway. Am I Bill Murray in this situation? Yeah, I don't know. I think you all were. You guys, <laughs> for a moment, my it, I, I, ret, I, I, I retconned you all. Yeah, I co yeah, I described you all as covered in blood, and then I forgot I did that. Anyway, I'm human. I make mistakes. Unlike all of us. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, uh, sh shall we? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm took it out. Just took it as OD now. Shall we? Should we call it a call it a night in this game and go go to bed and wake up the next morning? Satati will leave you to your. Um, if, uh, we spend a little while drinking. Yeah, I mean we're we're going to carry on drinking. Yeah. She yeah. leaves you to right, your right. your meal, and says that if you need anything from her, she says you you know the way to the Black Forest. Yes. Uh, I certainly yes. do. Yes, it's just south, right? <laughs> yeah. It's literally just south, but. Um, yeah. She. I says, feel like it's hard to admit. She says that, um, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Where did that come from? I must have turned something cool on. Um, she says that the, um, the entrance, she says that she thinks the, um, caravan would have entered the Black Forest south of Wend because there used to be a road there. And they would assume that even though the forest has quote unquote closed in, that there would still be a path where the road once was. And that's the best she can give you. That's a good point. That's probably one of the questions we should have asked. Whereabouts did they go into this forest? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, she well, doesn't just... know because she, she's never been there. Right. But, but she, she's talked to people. So uh, south of Wend, was it? Yeah. Okay, and there might have been a road that we... Yep, there used to be a road there, but there is not anymore. Okay. Would I uh, possibly know where that... Yep, absolutely you do. It's not your territory. The, your territory is on the other side of the, um, of the river. But... Um, um, your territory, the gold territory, is to the is to is the eastern half of the uh, Black Forest, so it's orc territory. But you also are like, what even is territory anymore? Shit's crazy now, down there. True. Images. So it's sort of like you're going to be going into what once was allied territory and is now progressively turning into enemy territory. Got it. But it's not like it's not like a full on war or anything, right? It's just like No, they're all border disputes and stuff. It's just a skirt. Little, yeah. like let me put you this way. Little scraps. Um you're a you're a, you're a tactician. You you're used to thinking strategically. Um but when there were two forests, one for the goal and one for the orcs, there was peace. Now there's one forest, probably not big enough for the two of you. Got it. The next morning. 
So here's the only thing we're going to do. This is the, this, we're going to finish the night. You guys head out the next day. You follow the advice by given to you by the priestess of Sektari, the boatman. And you head south toward the town of Wend. Um, it's up to you guys whether or not you, you want to go through Wend or not, or you want to skirt around it. But um, it takes you, because there is no road. Left. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It takes you uh, 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 almost two weeks. Oh, blimey. Yeah. Oh, yikes. We're going to know each other so well by then. Because there's no road. So you guys are, you guys are, ju- actually, that's not true. There's a road to wind. So that's, I start one, two, three, four, right? And then five, six. So it's going to take you one week. Okay. You're able to take the road to wind, in which case each hex is one day. And then when you leave the road, it's one hex is two days. And then when you get into the forest, all bets are off. Uh-huh. And what I would like now, um, it, with a different party, if the, you guys were all humans, for instance, finding... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I left out a piece of important information. Sektari wouldn't tell you this because she doesn't know this. But the barkeep, the guy who owns this place, Elwin, says if... Uh, if I understand what Sektari said, or what Satati said, Sektari is the name of the, of the god, um, then if I were you folks, I would head into the forest, go south, and look for Giant's Rest. That will be, that'll definitely be the first, where, where um, the folks from Melaine would have gone afterwards, I can't tell you. But the first thing they would have done is gone to Giant's Rest and resupplied. Once we're in the forest. In the forest, yes. In look, forest, just go south giant. and look for Giant's Rest. Okay. And then he realizes, oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. He's like, it's a big pool. It's a big pool of fresh water. Ah, okay. He's like, it's, it's a guarantee it's the first place the, the folks, because he knows these people. He goes, guarantee it's the first place the folks from uh, Millane would have done. Would I know where that is, or is that on the other side of the... Um, go ahead and make a... Uh, I don't remember how skills work. I don't remember which skills are which. Stand by. I've literally got like 60 skills in my head from four different editions of the game. Um, I remember when you could be a Boyer Fletcher, and that was a set. I remember before there were skills, when they were um, secondary, there were secondary skills and there were professions. Anyway, go ahead and make a... Um, History? Maybe nature? Oh, wait, no, you're asking where it's at. Yeah, go ahead and make a history check. Hmm. Well, no, I'm I missed. I missed the box. No, nope. oh, you missed the box. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> there we go. Aha! Aha! The old seven yep. seven plus eight. eight. You've nice. never heard. It. You've you hang on a minute, Tom. Um, I like that. My first DM used to take one of us out into the hallway whenever anything <laughs> secret happened. Excuse me. Yeah, I do. I used to do that all the time. Except if it was the other. If there was like. I might send everybody else out, depending on the ratio of people who, like, you're the only one who doesn't know this. Get out. <laughs> but, yeah, I used to do that all the time. That was one of the best things about D&D was secret information. Hey, so, right on. So I, I'd be like, yeah, I, I, I think I know where that is. I, I think I know what he means, gang. <laughs> you folks travel. All right, squad. You folks travel uh, down to Wend on the road, and you are uh, it, unusually, uh, because the DM doesn't have any random encounters prepared, You, it is uneventful. Probably if there were any bandits laying by the wayside, they are grossly intimidated by this fucking crazy-ass party walking down the road. Right. Um, and so they leave you alone. You skirt around the town of Wen. Oh, has that effect on people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, plus, I mean, look at you guys. Holy shit. You also are way, way more heavily armed than any normal civilians would be. <laughs> um, so the last thing we're going to do before we stop for the, the evening, because people are tired and I don't think we have... I don't think, I don't think we collectively have one more combat in us, so we'll probably start... Um, Actually, I can share some stuff with you folks. Uh, Zoga. Yeah. Make a how do I get around here check. You're the navigator right now. Make a nature check. Around nature. Way? Yep. Okay. You're entering the Black Forest, and you you have you definitely are familiar with this place that this dude called Giant's Rest. 
you have advantage? Um, can you have advantage? Have you been there before, Zoga? Uh, probably not if it's in the Orc Lands. Then no. Can I assist? Fair enough. Uh, this is a forest I don't think either of the elves have been to. Who here? So you guys enter the forest, and it's daylight. And Zoga is leading you folks. Um, Zoga, I have a question for you. Yes? How does your character behave when you realize you're not 100% sure that you're going in the right direction? Let me think. I, I believe that Zoga would would not try to obfuscate that information at all from the group. Okay. I, I, I think as soon as he thinks he's lost, he would, you know, convene with the group and be like, hey, you know, this is an unfamiliar patch of uh, turf for me. So I have a vague idea of where, of like wh what we're looking for and like where it might be, but I'm obviously having trouble getting there. I, I would I would try to delegate to someone who's like got better abilities with like tracking or anything like that. So Zoga um, is leading you folks. It's just there's a couple of times during the course of the day once you enter the forest proper that he realizes that he's he's taken a wrong turn and you have to backtrack a little bit. That's all. Yeah, you don't get lost. All right. It's just that he's not used to entering the forest from this direction. And we're, you're heading to a, a place that he's not super familiar with. Yeah, so the, the 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 side effect of Zoga not being able to make a beeline to this place called Giant's Rest is that by the time you get into the by the time you get to the point where Zoga's gaining a lot of confidence and he's like, I'm pretty sure I know where I'm going. Uh, it's night. Who here is going to carry a torch? Yeah. I'll carry a torch. I don't think I need to okay. wear a shield or armor. Dog. Plus, then I can hold it under my face for the shadows and make noises like. <laughs> I am the dread pirate, Roberts. <laughs> Careful about singeing that mustache. It's very resilient. Oh, sorry, I can coat down. it in torch. stone. Torch. Well, never mind. Add That's light. awesome. What else can your mustache do? There we go. Add light. What <gasps> is it? Oh my so god! Much. It worked. Okay, so it's, it's working. You guys, shut up. Um, uh, uh, go to the combat tracker and grab Lavellus, Sir Vanazor. We've still got initiative two power. And Zoga. I think you can delete that yourself. Um, and I am going to do something. I've never done this before. Here we go. Okay, doke. Huh. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> cool. We're in a forest. Neat. It's dark. So, uh, Ko, go ahead and move your dude and see what happens. Don't go too far. Okay. I'm going to take a... Oh, it's... You gotta unlock it. Yeah, go ahead and... Yeah. Go, okay, all right. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Get ready for a show, fast. everyone. I gotta turn. I gotta. I gotta. I wish there was a way to. There probably is a way to make it so the token lock is always defaults to off. Observe oh, okay. the light goes with him. Oh. Oh, to go too cool. far, we'll accidentally see the bad guys he's gonna kill us with. So, yeah, <laughs> for the following <laughs> light, the light left. <laughs> okay, right, stop. There's a leg over here. Stop, because I have right. not. We're gonna. We're, there, there, unfortunately, there's go a ahead. big. Well, actually, Co, go go directly north. Uh, spoilers. Oh, no. Hold on, let me zoom out. Yeah, Tend to it. zoom out. For, oh, okay. Yeah, I see this. <laughs> oh gosh, <Giant's laughs> we need to get out of here. This is why. Giant's they, rest. Yeah, Lavellus. Lavellus is like, ah, I don't know why it's called this. So Co's like, yeah, we're definitely in the right place, and you guys are in a dark forest that is overrun with lots of bad guys, oh, including ho hostile orcs. Uh, and next week when we read or next, whenever we get to play, get together to play next, you guys are literally going to explore this map. It's huge. 
and there's gonna be so freaking cool there's lots of different encounters and you guys so I i've never done it like this before but uh, excited. i'm excited and also i'll probably do some research offline to figure out how to make sure that like those of you who have different lighting vision like low light should be oh, i guess it's you guys have low light vision i don't know i don't think that um low light exists in fourth in in fifth edition there's just dark vision so mm -hmm. what what i should do is actually um i would translate let me let me hang on a second Oren. let me see if i can make this work for you yeah i'm looking at it right now just Disappear type in dark vision. out of the ring of light well i can figure there. out there no nope. oh yeah there we go can you see Oren? i can it's all black and white yeah like a dog so you, so here's the thing. You can, I, you're having a very, Oren, you're having a very different experience of this than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You can, you, the only thing that blocks your line of sight are trees and bushes and shit, the waterfalls. Trees, bushes, Whereas trees. these people can are carrying a torch and they can literally only see about two or three squares around them. So this is what Anna sees. This is what Oren sees, right? This is what Ko sees. I thought, uh, I thought Dragonborn had dark vision. So, I actually need to like, yeah, hang on a second. Dark vision. 60? So can I do 60 feet? Will that work? Yes. It sort of didn't really. Hang on a minute. It seems like it did something. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, it should only go out to, there should be a way, um, oh, 60 squares. I'm sorry, yes, I'm stupid. You guys are smart, S-M-R-T. She has dark vision out to 5, 10, 12, dark vision 12. There, At, that is actually how it's gonna work. So awesome, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. Anna well, Anna can cool. see in the dark, um, so you can, she can see a lot farther. Or I should say Oren can see a lot farther than you guys can. And actually some of you might have uh, dark vision too. I just have to give you guys, um, anyway. Next time we play, this will all be worked out. Okay. Is is low light the same as dark vision or or no? There, I, I'm I am going to adapt fourth edition because the system we're using for lighting is new to Fantasy Grounds and is designed for fifth edition. And uh -huh. fifth edition, fifth edition has there's basically like normal vision and dark vision and that's it. But fourth right. edition has other visions like low light, and so I'm going to have to kind of translate fourth edition stuff into fifth edition. Some of you guys are going to have low light vision, some of you won't. You will not, Tom. You're a human. Um, Ko, I don't know about. Lavellus, the two elves definitely have low light vision. Dragonborn, I don't know about. I'll have to think about it. Okay. I'm legitimately extremely excited for this. This is classic ex exploration d and I just found, I don't know where I got this map from. Actually, I think I bought it from the Fantasy Grounds, um, store. Uh. Walking up through the torchlight to reveal the skull was so dope yeah that I'm was really like cool it. I really liked it. This yeah. Is gonna, yeah that was awesome this is gonna be neat okay well but thanks Lord, for, thanks for hanging out everybody thanks for playing uh we didn't do any combat we did some role playing you guys took your quest you guys got some magic items that you have to divide up one specifically that you have to divide you have to decide who to you have to decide who to use who's gonna use and it's up to you folks when we play next uh whenever you guys are around and want to play we can uh we can scout out this forest and see if you can find any trace of the caravan of humans that came through here.